Hey miners, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, the new home of power mining analysis. In today's video, Anthony Power and I are pleased to welcome Sue Ennis back to the channel. She's actually my longest running interview guest in the Bitcoin mining space, head of IR at HUD8 Corp. Just came off earnings. There's been so many developments at this organization over the last few quarters under the new CEO, Asher Janut's leadership. We want to talk about all of that, earnings, operations, and of course, growth in today's video. Before we do though, take a second, smash the like button, you guys. Big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let me know in the comments section below if you're currently holding shares of HUD8, what you think about these recent moves in the share price and your outlook into next year. Now, with that being said, let's get into today's interview. Okay, guys, so that's right. Today's video, Sue Ennis, hot off the heels of earnings, but we were just discussing there's so much going on in this business that we want to get into today. Shorter video, we've got 25 minutes. It's going to be action packed. We're going to get into earnings, plus all of these other initiatives, HPC, self mining, and obviously 2025 outlook. So, Sue, thanks so much for taking the time. Great to see you again. Thank you so much for having me. So much to get into. And yeah, excited to, to chat today. Earnings came out yesterday, so we've we've had a quick look through those. But in your own terms, uh, you know, looking at those three months between August and se sorry July and September, what were the biggest highlights for you coming out of the earnings report? Uh, so I think the the biggest highlights were we beat street estimates uh, on earnings per share by twenty nine cents. We beat revenue estimates by about three and a half million bucks. Um, we had four analyst price targets upgrade up grades post earnings from about 25 bucks to north of 32 bucks. Uh, so it's been a really great 24 hours. Asher is very sad he couldn't come on today, but we're just hustling. Um, I think I think also the fleet upgrade, us finally announcing that, and then happy to get into some of the conversations we had at the Cantor conference yesterday, especially further to us finally giving the street a little bit more intel in terms of what we're doing in the AI space and announcing 430 megawatts of AI that we're close to closing um, that has power available before the end of 2025. So yeah, lots going on. Very much awesome. Um, in terms of you know um, earnings, you 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 had a obviously a, well surprisingly a, a net a net uh, income. Uh, position for the for the period and and of the mining companies that have come out i think you're the only one at the moment and i was anticipating everybody was going to be red because the metrics for the bitcoin price and the halving were just not aligned to, for miners really to make um a profit especially when you look at de you know depreciation and and some of the other non-cash costs that, that have to be included um in the accounts but you came out with just shy of a million dollars in terms of net income now there were a couple of things that sort of help that that position and and we can talk very briefly about um two of those one of them was the the uh, the, the 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 extra uh, payment from marathon digital for the for the for the year's contract and then also i would class you know the power sales in that period because of the warm weather as maybe not going to be representative every quarter it will yeah. still be probably there every some quarter but not to the extent of maybe the, the hottest months of the year uh, what's your views on those two yeah, no, I think I think that's definitely uh, a solid takeaway. But I also think that we did announce our self mining fleet upgrade, which is projected to improve our mining margins by about eighteen yeah. percent. And if you look at uh, hash rate and global hash hash prices when we did that announcement, which have since even gotten even even more compelling those economics. But when we did that announcement, that that fleet upgrade would result in an extra two point three ish Bitcoin per day for HUD eight. So um, definitely things are trending in the right direction. And uh, I mean, Asher did what he said he was going to do, right? He he said he was there to clean up the business, reduce our cost of power. And he effectively took that from, let's just focus on the cost of power side, to undisclosable, to then a little bit north of 4 cents, down to 3.2 cents, and now going to, down to 2.8 cents per kilowatt hour. Power is the number one piece of the business. You guys know that. So we are very, very excited. And like I said, Asher said he was going to do something, said he was going to clean up the business so that we could set it up for success and mega growth. And I think he's, I think he's shown that he's, that's, he, he says what he says, he's going to do something and he does it. So you're absolutely right. So, I mean, I, the, the power for me was probably the standout piece 
of the earnings update. You know, I mean, we've seen some mining companies, they're quoting three cents. You know, we know that Cypher have got one of their sites, a, a PPA at 2.7, but the rest of the sites probably bring it above three. But to highlight across the board that, that power rate, you're probably the envy of the Bitcoin mining community at the moment. And once those new miners, which we'll probably come on to next, I'll let Bryce talk to that with you, um, you'll have an efficient fee that will drive that Bitcoin price down even further, um, mm -hmm. making you sort of like more aligned for, for great uh, earnings to come in future quarters. Yeah, that's the plan. See, these used to be my podcasts. I used to interview you by myself, Sue, and now Anthony takes all the good questions. That's fine. <laughs> I'll ask the fun ones. I love Bitcoin mining. HUD8 was a Bitcoin company to start with. Obviously, HPC is the talk of the town right now, and we'll finish the interview there. But our viewers want to know about Bitcoin mining, Sue. So can we talk about next year, the fleet, the targets, the exahash growth, um, the efficiency of the fleet, how we're funding this, just a quick high level summary of everything we need to know on the mining front. Yeah, absolutely. So we talked about how we're upgrading our self mining fleet uh, and those machines we should have about, I think it's Q1 2025. That takes us to about 9.3 exahash, an improvement from 31 joules per terahash of efficiency down to about 19.9 joules per terahash. Effectively, that brings our break-even price to about nine nine cents per kilowatt hour just from that just from that upgrade of the self-mining fleet alone. And then we also signed the hosting contract with Bitmain. So that's 55% margins, a floor of 135 million bucks, 15 exahash, and an option to convert those machines from hosted to self-mining, AKA without having to wait six to 12 months for machine deliveries. If economics start to look really sexy, we can literally flip them overnight. Um, and so, and then also that site with it, where the Bitmain, where the Bitmain machines are going to be um, is one of our direct liquid to chip cooling sites that can cool up to 200 kilowatt racks. The significance of that is cooling is the future, whether it be ASIC chips, whether it be GPUs, cooling is the future. Liquid to chip cooling is 3000 times more efficient at pulling heat from chips than air. And so again, beefing up our expertise in effectively what is the future of compute is another big, uh, value add for, or, you know, thing that we're pretty excited about. And also building that site, the DLC direct liquid to chip cooling at $4,000 per megawatt um, is something, you know, we're pretty excited about proving to the market we can do. Um, and so, yeah, lots, lots of stuff. That's awesome. I mean, talk about the um, the, the the fleet upgrades. You, your your relationship with Bitmain must be quite special. You've got, a, I think they've even designed their own machine for you, it looks like. That's right. Yeah, no. So so we so we co-innovated on um this chip and design rack infrastructure. And what's unique about this particular design is it's a U-form factor. And I'm trying to get the guys to disclose what the hell that even means. Cause for most of us who aren't in the data center space, I'm like, no one knows what that means. What it means though, high level, is that normally when you're shoving a Bitcoin miner into an infrastructure, it's like a shoebox, chicken coop. You know, yeah, we, we've stuff. been to, we've been to for some. Yeah, you know, so. I don't need. I don't need to. Now. We're experts, Sue. <laughs> yeah, so. You're the experts. So, um, <laughs> but so so we've designed it into a U form factor that is that is found in traditional data centers, and so, I, and I think I came on and I was talking about this how uh, Asher actually pitched Eric Schmidt um, a couple of years ago, and it was only one pitch. Eric was like, "No, pass. Not interested in mining." But one of the things he said to Asher on the call was. Where the hell's the institutionalized structure? Like, why are these in chicken? Like, why are these in chicken coops? Like, where's the institutional formation here? And that got Asher's head going. And then obviously we saw the importance of liquid uh, start to um, emerge in terms of uh, being able to scale with where density and heat requirements were going. And so, um, yes. Mike and Asher have had a really close relationship with Bitmain for a very long time. We're not married to Bitmain. We can still certainly do deals with MicroBT, Canon, because we've got relationships with all of the manufacturers. But yeah, the Bitmain one is very special for sure. Uh, Mike and Asher were with them in China um, for quite a quite a while. They just got back about a week ago. Um, and one thing I will say, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about like tariffs in China and, you know, how, how are things going to go with the new Trump administration playing out? Um, and just for the audience's edification, because we've been talking to institutions about this, 
Um, the chips are already assembled. They are also being assembled outside of China. Um, and so, you know, we think we've got a pretty solid path. Um, obviously, we can't predict the future, but we feel we feel good about, you know, being able to get these energized like we said we're going to in the first second half or, yeah, the first half of 2025. I think I think Bitdeer have got a SEAL team up there or something like that in their, their bailiwick they can help you with, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we love them, Bitdeer guys. Cool. They're cool. I've thought about um, the tariffs more, though, Sue. We've had that question on a few times. And if Trump does follow through with his strategic reserve, all Bitcoin is made in America, obviously he needs to understand that those chips are integral in getting the miners going to get the Bitcoin. So it, it will be interesting to see. None of us can predict the future, but they've proven to be fairly pro Bitcoin and everything related so far. Totally. And also like, regardless of the Bitcoin mining industry, if he does impl Im implement all the tariffs that he said he was going to implement in order to get elected, that would potentially impact GDP negatively by 1.4% and cause like 0.9% rise in inflation. So again, remains to be seen, but I think that, you know, we're going to probably see some wiggle room there now that he's finally, you know, in yeah. office. Now, moving, shifting away from the from the mining to the to the more, uh, you know, the, the the thing that everyone's talking about at the moment, the high performance computing. You guys, you know, even at Hut Eight, were, were in this HPC game long before uh, most of the miners now. And you bought those data centers in Canada. Um, I remember a couple of years ago we had a conversation as you were buying those data centers um, because you were sort of like ask, you know, how will this look as a Bitcoin miner? doing this and I said it's, it's it's another revenue stream for you absolutely and so looking through the earnings we can see the earnings from those the money that's generated through that HPC business there but we're here to sort of like talk about the potential now with the amount of power that you have in terms of available now and the pipeline of power that you've highlighted in your presentation and we'll share that with the um, uh, the, 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 the subscribers today on the podcast. Uh, can yeah. you tell us about, you know, what the plans are, you know, in terms of, you know, HPC growing within 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 Hutate? Yeah. So we finally announced on the earnings call after like many fistfights between Asher and I about disclosures that we have 430 megawatts of AI um, that is under exclusivity, but like very close to, being a reality in terms of our portfolio. Um, again, Asher has a big fear of, not fear, but he's very concerned with over-promising, under-delivering. Like, you know, we don't, we only have one chance with the market to establish credibility and we don't want to ever be in a situation where, you know, we're putting targets on our back and not missing them. Anyhow, so we got this 430 megawatts of AI that we're really excited about with, and those sites, it's three different sites and they have power available before the end of 2025. The major power crunch is in the one to three year time frame, So that matters. That's why we added that. Um, these aren't sites that, you know, are potentially still in the queue up for energization in 2028. So, um, and then two of them are front of the meter. One of them is a behind the meter site. So um, we're really excited about that. One of the things in a lot of our institution com institutional conversations that institutions ask us is like, well, what's your competitive edge? Okay, you've secured these megawatts. That's impressive. 430 is no joke, especially if the power is available before the end of 2025. But like, what else do you have? So, and that's where us being in the traditional high performance compute space since January, 2022 comes into play. Because we've got guys on our team already in-house who have closed hyperscaler deals before, not in the multi-hundred megawatts, more so in the 30 to 40 megawatt range, because traditionally hyperscaler deals were on the smaller end. This new AI hundred multi-hundred megawatts, this, this is somewhat unprecedented. So we've got that expertise in-house in terms of how to interact with these counterparties. This isn't just a random pivot for us. We've got that expertise in-house on top of having a team that understands the nuances that come with data center and, you know, N plus one, uh, i.e. like from a redundancy perspective, SOC 2 compliance, ISO certification, et cetera. So- um, Notwithstanding you were an Ethereum miner in the past as well. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an important part of the puzzle as well. So <laughs> exactly, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So, um, and again, like in, we were at the Cantor conference, like I said, and Asher and I uh, had a million, and Sean, our CFO, we had a really good meetings. Um, and one of the things that we definitely want to drive home with all of our potential and current investors is that we're not pivoting just to AI. We're not moving around. We're not moving away from Bitcoin mining. 
Um, we are a power and infrastructure company. We are a power development company. Bitcoin is our tool and will continue to be our tool to capture cheap megawatts and then find the next highest use case for those electrons. And sometimes those megawatts are just meant to be commercialized and going towards Bitcoin mining or AI or green hydrogen or whatever. So this isn't a pivot away. We are diehard believers in Bitcoin as a tool in the, in, the, in, in, in Bitcoin in general. And so I just wanted to make sure the audience still knows that. Absolutely. And in terms of um, the HPC strategy, I'm, I'm assuming you're, it's more aligned to maybe what Core Scientific are doing rather than, say, what um, Iron are doing with their in-house on-demand type service. Yeah. Yeah. So so we definitely prefer the more CapEx light infrastructure focused models like the core scientific deal. Although we did incubate an, a company within our company called HiRise.ai, and that's where our 1,000 H100s will sit. But no more parent level financing is going towards that company. It has its own CEO. It has its own financing team. Um, they are working on a uh, on yeah cloud on demand offering um, and, you know, growing that business. We actually just hired the former head of the IDF is going to be a CTO to do some really cool, unique offerings that we're building up for the platform there. But parent level co, we're focused on power, focused on infrastructure. We're not really chasing chip cycles. That's what our highrays.ai can figure out how to do. Because um, again, we think that the real bread and butter is the infrastructure and power side, uh, for at least for parent co. And they, how is that? How is that new that that new project going? The the, the high rise one that you mentioned there. The, the, well, interestingly, I'm getting a lot more inbounds about it because Coreweave now just announced that they're going public, and so I think everyone's really interested to see you know what's sort of the next the next big opportunity. Um, the team is killer. It's a CEO is a guy named Vince Fong, uh, a super influential guy from Hong Kong. Uh, their head of strategic financing is Danny Fryer, who's done a lot of deals in the PE space. So, and then, like I said, the new CTO is from um, the IDF. And so it's a really, really, really strong team. Again, we're thrilled that we incubated it. We're thrilled it's part of HUT, but parent level is focused on the the bones, the architecture of, of where this industry and power is going. Awesome. Very cool. Hey, another project I've seen some interesting pictures from in the deck. Uh, looks like you guys are starting to break ground is the Vega site. I know Asher is very excited about this one. So maybe we can just talk about some of the construction process, uh, the upgrades that are going on there, and then we'll give you a chance to close out here, Sue. Totally. So Vega is the 205 megawatt site. It is. It does have potential to one day be AI. So I'd sort of look at it as like a call option on AI. It's not included in part of that 430 megawatts that we disclosed. Um, but this is the site where we're doing that Bitmain deal with the op with the op with the 135 million floor annualized uh, revenue that we're getting from the Bitmain deal with an option to convert those machines to energize sorry, convert those machines towards self-mining. And this is where that direct liquid to chip cooling within the U-form factor, uh, this is that site. That's where that's what's being stood up right now. Um, I do think that's going to be our first on-site analyst and investor day is going to be that site so that people can see, touch, stand in what the future of cooling looks like in the U-form factor up to 100, I'm sorry, up to 200 kilowatts per rack um, is what's being stood up there. Again, I don't. I I was hoping we could show more about what like the actual design would look like versus just empty land. But yeah, there's a ton of dudes on site right now, guys and gals, uh, who are standing that up because we told the market we're going to energize it in the first half of 2025. Just a reminder that U.S. Bitcoin Corp. prior to now being HUD eight, these guys they stood up one exahash in 43 days. Um, they energized 70 over 70 megawatts, I think, in like two months. Like they are. Uh, or, yeah, or sorry, is over 65 megawatts in under two months. They are absolute machines. And so we're excited to prove again to the market just how good we are uh, from an operations perspective. So under Asher's leadership. So, yeah. Well, well, we, we, we were hoping to get Asher on the uh, on the podcast today because yeah. we're, we're, we've passed quarter three now. And I remember him saying at least uh, two quarters ago, judge me in quarter three of my performance. And um, if I had my school teacher's uh, hat on today, I probably would give him a, a, an A for, for performance this year because okay. the share price has really rallied uh, since he took over as CEO. And if I look at the the last six weeks, you're the best performing uh, mining stock out there. Uh, we know that because we're running a competition 
and um, all the people that selected Hut in their uh, portfolio are sat right at the top of the competition at the moment. I think the share price is over 100% up in, since October the 1st. So um, that was great insight for those few people who selected that. Um, unfortunately, Bryce and myself didn't. So <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take a C grade on our performance. We'll have, we'll um, have some extra guacamole on you guys. Now there that you go. Have... Hey? You're going to be... Yeah, the whole avocado Ooh. farm here soon. Uh, that's no, great. that's <laughs> that's great, Sue. I wanted to give you an opportunity just to close out here. If there's anything uh, topical, upcoming catalysts, anything maybe we didn't touch on in the interview that you wanted to take a moment and speak about. Yeah, I think um, I think that we're going to continue our strategy of keeping our cards pretty close to our chest on this AI side of things. And again, that's not because we're trying to not be transparent, but it's just because there are so many things that can go awry when you're closing these deals. LOIs get ripped up all the time in the data center space. And so we've been doing a ton of work that we haven't talked about to the market. I, again, like I finally was able to get Asher to at least disclose there's 430 that are like really near term in the power timeline. And so I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, just we're going to we're going to keep you guys posted and we're working on big things and we really appreciate all of our shareholders uh you know for sticking with us because we know it's been tough but like we're really truly just getting started and so yeah well we're here excited to uh watch the progress continue obviously that analyst day perked my attention as well sue so we yes, look forward to seeing for uh sure. vega in uh, real life there Thanks so much for making the time. We understand you guys are extremely busy, a lot going on. If you have any questions for Sue, Asher, or the team, you guys leave them in the comment section below. We'll make sure we get them over to the group. If you're still watching, hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe. Sue, we'll talk to you soon.